Um, so before GoTab, uh, basically we started talking to GoTab in about 2019, uh, trying to figure out with $14 minimum wage in San Diego, how do you try to keep an eye on your labor without sacrificing your guest experience, uh, as well as how do you try to integrate a new platform uh, with something that we already had. So as Stone was growing and trying to expand to go international, uh, we ended up going with uh, Symphony and ended up, uh, as COVID started to become more of a thing, we no longer needed to worry about going international, but we already had Symphony in place. So we needed to find something that would be able to integrate uh, with the systems that we already had. And luckily, we figured out that GoTab would be able to be that kind of missing link piece to connect the dots together. Uh, so our guest experience, uh, we kind of offered what we started out doing strictly just GoTab service. Uh, we had the QR spots on the table. Uh, guests would be able to scan those. The, the host or hostess would kind of interact with them. Uh, we've since kind of migrated to more of what we call the hybrid version of service. Uh, so the guest can either start their own tab or uh, somebody uh, for Stone, we had all Cicerones. They were all certified. Um, so they would go around to interact with the guests and talk to them about the beer itself. Obviously, if you're coming to Stone and you want to try one of the 40 taps of beer that's out on their garden, you want to know a little bit more about it. So kind of a little bit more of an interactive experience. Uh, however, then it could still be handed off. And additionally, we didn't want guests to feel that technology was stopping their interaction with uh, someone from the team. So uh, the fact that there's also messaging available as well gave managers access directly to respond to guest feedback uh, from anywhere that they were in the restaurant. Hey, Rich, could you expand a little bit? Because uh, on the East Coast, breweries don't have menus as extensive and high quality as Stone does. So what's like the food beverage mix, just so people don't think this is just slinging beers? So Stone is slightly different than most other breweries. Um, the bistros that exist in San Diego only exist for one reason, according to one of the founders, and that is so that people have a place to have really good beer excuse me, really good food while they're enjoying all of our amazing beer. So my food was secondary to all of the amazing beer that we had. I was totally okay with it because if you've ever had Stone's beers, they are incredible. Um, but the mix overall was probably about 60-40 um, at any given point in time where we were selling more food uh, than bar, uh, whether that be beer, wine, seltzers, or cocktails. Uh, so it's, again, a very food-driven menu uh, as opposed to most breweries that are a little bit more, you know, more beer-centric with like snacks. Um, and then just kind of our steps in service, whether a guest was making an online reservation uh, or they were coming in off the street, uh, whoever is taking them to the table is asking them, have you been in a stone before? Everybody's used to that, you know, kind of standard question, but it was also, have you been in in the last year? And trying to find out, have you interacted with the GoTab QR code system? Uh, because we did totally switch it over um, from integrating with Micros, the guests needed to be able to have the, the point of reference for being able to use the system, as well as understand that they're not just being thrown into the wild. Uh, there is The team is still available to help. Um, from there, depending on the style of service that the guests would prefer, some people want to scan their own, start their own tab. They want to be fully independent, uh, whether that was for COVID concerns or uh, I have a lot of really socially awkward coding friends who just like to be able to like not interact with the server. Uh, or they have that amazing luck like I do, where as soon as you take a bite, that's when somebody comes over to check on you. Uh, so they love this because it was frictionless. It was super contact free. Uh, so within that, uh, you can have that experience or a uh, server could come over, get your tab started, answer questions about beer, uh, and then be able to produce the QR code that you can then scan, pick up your own tab. So throughout the entire process, it's meant to be uh, as guest driven as they want. If they want the interaction with the team, they have it. If they want less interaction, they can have that. And what we found is for Stone being a 30,000 square foot restaurant, we were able, we were able to operate using anywhere from 30 to 50% of the front of house staff that we had uh, for pre-pandemic levels, and we were seeing sales volume that was significantly higher than 2019. So you heard that, almost an acre? That's how big this restaurant is. But most restaurants you can get from like the kitchen to the furthest point in typically 60 to 90 seconds. Like every restaurant I've ever worked in, no matter how big it was, I've always done the test. From the line all the way out to the furthest table, usually 60 to 90 seconds. For me to go from the expo window all the way out to the furthest part of the garden took about two and a half minutes. So food runners especially would just be, they were getting their steps in there all the time. So it's uh, definitely a, a big venue. But again, that also played into the fact that using something like the, the frictionless ordering through GoTab, uh, if somebody wanted to get a refill of a beer, 
they wanted to get something different. They just wanted to pay their tab. They're not trying to look around for a server who may be trying to hustle to get from the kitchen. I don't know if you guys know, sometimes uh, chefs are a little bit frictionful, where when we want food run out of the kitchen, we have a tendency to raise our voice and not be the most pleasant people. And uh, at Stone, all the service team had walkie-talkies, and you don't want me barking in your ear via walkie-talkie, because while I may seem cuddly and sweet, uh, when my food is dying in the window, I'm definitely not. Uh, so instead, it gave the guests the option for being able to uh, take care of their check if they wanted to order something else. They could look things up, or if they had a question, they could ask it directly through, uh, through GoTab as well. So, uh, yeah, and then kind of just tagging in on this. Now, uh, ever since uh, while I was still at Stone, we made the full transition from Symphony over to GoTab point of sale, including having the uh, KDS uh, screens in the kitchen. Um, We've rolled it out for all of our company stores as well, so that's more of a merchandise, uh, merchandise, bottle beer, uh, kind of getting growler fills and things like that to go. Um, it's been amazing to be able to see you can have so much flexibility going across the board, uh, as well as now um, Stone is piloting some newer programs uh, that, that Tim can definitely speak to a little bit better, uh, but for being able to really dig into all the data that you can actually get from your guests. Like Tim mentioned before, your point of sale system historically doesn't have any of that individual guest data, but if guests are creating profiles and they're ordering the same thing every time they come in, and they're ordering through that same platform, you're now able to get insights into, well, what is the beer that they're drinking the most of? And if our brewer comes up with something that's great, we can now specifically market towards those people who are coming in of, hey, we're testing out something new, come check it out. And now you're able to leverage all of that data that you never had access to before. If those of you who have uh, customer data profiles or anything like that, um, you can feed just a, someone earlier was talking about uh, payer data. Uh, which I think is far, not nearly granular enough, you should be able to see every person at the table, not just the person who paid. There's, uh, I think the woman from the ice cream place, she was saying that a lot more men buy ice cream. And I think her data might actually just be that a lot more pen, men pay for ice cream. But I don't know that, you know, she has real perspective on that because everybody except for the payer is invisible. <laughs> 